Welcome everyone. In signals and systems, we will study signals in this lesson. In particular, we will study real signals and later on we will study complex signals. Now, under real signals, we will study sinusoids, discrete time sinusoidal signals and exponential signals. Later, after a brief, brief study about complex numbers, we will study continuous time complex exponentials, then discrete time complex exponentials, step and impulse functions, and then signal energy and power. Okay, let's start with the continuous time a sinusoidal signal. We write the continuous time sinusoidal signal as xt equals a cos omega naught t plus phi. So this symbol, which is phi, or some call it phi, is the phase of the sinusoid, and omega naught is actually the angular frequency measured in radians per second, and a is the amplitude of the signal. So you can see, since we write this as x within parentheses t, this is a continuous time signal. So in this case, particularly, we are plotting omega naught equals 1 and phi equals minus pi by 6. So if you think about computing some points of this time signal, time domain signal, we can take values like t equals 0 and so on and plot this. So if t is equal to 0, uh, you can see x0 is equal to a cos omega naught times 0 minus pi by 6. So in this case, uh, you can see uh, the answer is a cos pi by 6, uh, which is uh, this value. So therefore, for different values like this, uh, you can compute xt and plot it. Then you can identify that this signal repeats itself with this interval called the period. Usually we use the symbol t for the period. In this case we have used t naught. And this kind of a signal is called a periodic signal because of this repetition. We will study this further in the coming slides. Now, this sinusoidal signal is periodic. A periodic continuous time signal xt has a property that there is a positive value capital T for which the signal is equal when delayed by capital T. For all values of small t, uh, this one is very important. Whatever the value of small t is, x t is equal to x small t plus capital T. Under an appropriate time shift, the signal repeats itself. In this case, we say that signal x t is periodic with period t. Then we can compute the fundamental period t naught or t. That's the smallest positive value of t for which this equation 2 holds. A signal that is not periodic is re referred to as an aperiodic signal. Now let's consider this sinusoid that we looked at in the previous slide, a cos omega naught t plus phi. Now let's see whether we can find a capital T for which uh, this relationship holds whatever the value of small t is. Now instead of all small t, as uh, seen in this equation 2, we put uh, t plus t. 
So here, if omega naught t is equal to 2 pi m, that means an integer multiply multiple of 2 pi, uh, then uh, this equality holds. You can write as a cos omega naught t plus pi. So we can write in this context that t is equal to 2 pi m divided by omega naught, the fundamental period t naught, some usually we use capital T itself as 2 pi divided by omega naught. So now let's consider the phase of a sinusoidal signal. Phase is very important of a signal. A time shift in the continuous time sinusoid is equivalent to a phase shift. And this is not so in discrete time sinusoids. So therefore, we have to pay attention to this property. So as an example, let's show that a time shift of a sinusoid is equal to a phase shift. Now let's uh, consider a time shift. That means we write a cos omega naught t plus t naught. Now this is the time shift. Uh, so we expand this omega naught t plus omega naught t naught. And then you can see that this is a constant. It's not a variable de that depends on t. So therefore we can write it as a phase shift or delta t. So delta, de delta phi, delta phi is a change in phase. Uh, so a cos omega naught t plus t naught plus phi, if you write it like that, we can uh, consider this phi as a multiple, multiple of, write uh, uh, right this in this fashion. And so therefore you can capture uh, this phi is also into omega naught times some quantity like this. So therefore you can see uh, for uh, continuous time sinusoidal signal, a time shift is equivalent to a phase shift and a phase shift is equivalent to a time shift. Now let's look at even and odd signals. So if you think about a continuous time signal xt or a discrete time signal xn, uh, such a signal is referred to as an even signal if it is uh, if it is identical to its time reversed counterpart that is with its reflection about the origin uh, so that means mathematically x minus t is equal to xt now we can uh, draw a simple signal like this a continuous time signal xt uh, which is actually even uh, so let's uh, consider a signal of this nature for example now it would be even if, if you time reflect reflect this signal along the y-axis you get the same thing so if this is the signal uh, this kind of signal is called called even so it is symmetric across the y-axis that's what this means so similarly the discrete time uh, signal so for discrete time uh, you can uh, draw an example maybe like this let's draw this so this signal uh, is actually an even signal because if you reflect here you get exactly the same thing so a uh, signal is referred to as odd if you reflect the time axis you get the negative of the signal so these are even signals. So if you want to draw odd signals, I'll draw only for the continuous time an example. Now, now let's uh, consider some signal like this. Signal like this. So odd means if you reverse the time axis, you get the negative of the signal. So you can see, if you reflect, you have to get right the negative value. Okay. So an odd signal must be uh, t equals zero and e equals zero. It must be zero. A signal can be usually broken into. It can be broken into a sum of two signals, one of which is even and one of which is. Odd. 
Uh, so we call these two parts the even part and the odd part. So you can see uh, we have written this in this uh, special characters e, e, e and V uh, to show the even part or D to show the odd part of the signal. So sometimes we write X E T for the even part and X O T uh, for the odd part. Uh, so we can prove that it is equal to half X T plus X minus T and also uh, the odd part is half x t minus x minus t. Okay, the proof is actually very simple. Show that even part of x t is equal to half x t plus x minus t. As a notation, x e t is the even part of x t, x o t is the odd part of x t. Uh, so, x t is actually the combination, the addition of x e t and x o t. Uh, so, if you write x minus t, what happens? Uh, now, we write x e minus t and x o minus t here. We know that the even part is even. So, therefore, for an even signal, if you time reverse the uh, signal, you get the same thing. For an odd, part, odd signal, if you time reverse, you get the negative of it. Uh, so, therefore, uh, this is uh, what you get if you put t equals minus t. Uh, then, you have two equations. And then you can add the two equations, so this one and this one two. And when you add one and two, uh, you get uh, this expression. And therefore, uh, you have the answer uh, that you wanted because this XO gets cancelled off. Okay, so you can see that the even part of the signal is half XT plus x minus t. Similarly, uh, you can prove uh, that the odd part is equal to x half x t minus x minus t. Okay, so let's uh, briefly uh, consider about the phase of the sinusoid once again and when phase changes, what happens to it. Uh, so here in this case, I have plotted a cos omega naught t uh, that means with phase equal, equal to zero. So this is the familiar signal that you have seen in your school as well. So at every t uh, it repeats. Uh, this signal is even uh, because if you reflect uh, the signal here uh, you get exactly the same thing. If you mirror an even signal about the time origin it would look exactly the same. Uh, so is it periodic? Yes it is periodic. We have seen this before and it is also even. Uh, now if we Add phi equals minus phi by 2, that means a cos omega naught t minus phi by 2. And then when you, if you put, for example, uh, t equals 0, uh, you will get a cos minus phi by 2, which is 0. Uh, so uh, if you put uh, phi by 2 uh, to this uh, uh, signal, uh, t equals phi by 2. Uh, remember, in this uh, case, we have taken omega naught t is equal to 1, uh, you will see. Uh, you get uh, cos 0 that is 1 and so on. So you can plot it. Uh, this signal is odd. Uh, that means if we flip an odd signal about the time origin, we also multiply it by a minus sign to get the original signal. So you can see if you reflect it across the time origin, uh, you get the minus of the signal. So is it periodic? Uh, it is periodic uh, and it is odd. Uh, so now we have uh, looked at uh, sinusoids. Uh, now let's look at discrete time uh, sinusoidal signals. So xn equals a cos omega naught n plus phi with phi equals to 0 is what I have plotted here. Uh, so you know that n is an integer. As these are discrete time signals. Uh, so, for different values of n, uh, you can plot it. Uh, for example, when n is equal to 0, uh, you, if you, now in this case a is equal to 1, uh, you get 1 here. And for different values of n, uh, you get uh, different values. So, in this case, um, you can see uh, our omega naught is uh, phi by n, phi by 8. Uh, so, actually uh, the period is uh, capital N, n is equal to 16. So how do we know that? So uh, 
uh, we uh, can actually uh, count uh, this uh, so you can take two equal points of the signal and uh, then uh, you can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 yes, you have to stop there so you can see at every 16th sample you get the same thing uh, so n is equal to 16 uh, so omega naught is equal to 2 pi by n and uh, therefore omega naught is equal to uh, pi by 8 uh, so we uh, check that by the same condition that we saw for the continuous time counterpart xn must be equal to xn plus n capital N now for the continuous time counterpart we had x small t must be equal to x small t plus capital T if the signal is periodic and this signal is even as you can see because if you reflect it at the time origin uh, you get the uh, same thing uh, so remember the sequence takes values only at integer values of the argument in okay and now let's consider uh, the same signal with phi equals minus pi by 2 uh, so if you put uh, phi equals minus pi by 2 you get a cos omega naught in minus pi by 2 uh, in this case uh, we can once again find out what capital n is so you will see at every 16 sample you get the same thing uh, so it is n is equal to 16 so we can compute omega naught omega naught is equal to 2 pi divided by n so therefore omega naught is equal to pi by 8 in this case uh, so once again um, uh, when you consider the uh, consider the signal whether it is odd and even or odd you can see it is odd if you reflect at the uh, time origin you get the negative of the signal. So, so let's uh, consider um, whether we can write this as uh, this uh, phase shift as a time shift. So you write a cos omega naught n plus n naught. So this is uh, like a time shift. So whether a value can be found for n naught, an integer can be found for n. So in note is uh, pi by omega naught in this case. Uh, so phi by omega naught. Uh, so we know that uh, phi has been given as minus pi by two, and uh, omega naught is pi uh, by eight. So therefore this is minus four. Okay, so we were able to find an n naught for this. Now we'll uh, study this in detail. Uh, question: Does a phase change always correspond to a time shift? In discrete time signals and the answer, answer is actually no uh, so let's uh, consider this uh, signal a cos omega naught n plus phi whether it is equal to whether it is equal to omega naught a cos omega naught n plus n naught that means whether we can find an integer n naught uh, so for that to happen omega naught n plus omega naught n naught must be equal to omega naught n plus phi uh, so what this means is omega naught n naught must be equal to phi and n naught is an integer uh, depending on phi and omega naught n naught may not be turn out to be an integer so therefore in discrete time the amount of time shift the amount of time shift must be an integer in discrete time so therefore sometimes a phase shift cannot be written as an equivalent uh, time shift so all continuous time sinusoids are periodic however discrete time sinusoids are not necessarily so uh, so for the periodicity we have this condition for discrete time signals xn must be equal to xn plus capital n smallest capital n is the fundamental period so a cos omega naught n plus capital n plus phi then must be equal to a cos omega naught n plus omega naught n plus phi so therefore omega naught n 
uh, must be an integer multiple of 2 pi for this equality to hold. Uh, so that means therefore periodicity means omega naught capital N must be equal to 2 pi M and integer multiple of 2 pi. Uh, that means uh, capital N must be equal to 2 pi M or omega naught and N, capital N and M must both be integers. So smallest value of capital N if any is a fundamental period. Sometimes N may not be an integer in this case the signal is not periodic. So therefore, you once again, you can see capital N must be an integer multiple of 2 pi by omega naught. So depending on this omega naught, uh, you might not be able to find the capital N. Okay. Uh, so when you consider periodicity, let's uh, consider some of uh, these signals. Uh, so uh, this one omega naught, uh, uh, so the expression is xn uh, equals a cos omega naught n plus phi so here you can see phi is 0 and omega naught n is equal to 2 pi by 12 so omega naught is equal to uh, 2 pi by uh, 12 so what is uh, capital N? 2 pi o omega naught. So therefore N is equal to 12 in this case. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. With capital N equals 12, the signal repeats. So this is periodic. Now let's consider this one, uh, 2 pi over 6n, uh, so n is equal to 2 pi over omega naught, that is 2 pi over 6, so therefore n is capital N is 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it repeats, this is period. I see n is an integer. also integer. So let's take this one uh, 8 pi over 31 n. So let's see whether there is an n capital N is equal to 2 pi 8 pi over 31. So that means 31 over 4. Actually we want this to be um, we can have an m also right remember in this case, I, I did not have to do that in the previous cases. Uh, so, for m equals 4, uh, there is uh, periodicity. Uh, so, th therefore, you can see in this case, now if you consider the this envelope, uh, this envelope, there is no signal like that. If you consider this envelope, uh, you need four cycles of that envelope for the discrete time sinusoid to be periodic. That's what this means. So see for yourself uh, if that is the case after four periods of the envelope, envelope the discrete time signal repeats. Uh, that means um, let's take four of them. Uh, consider this point so you can see it's not the peak not the peak here's the peak so you see after four cycles it repeats after four cycles so it is periodic but in this this last case let's consider um, n is equal to omega naught that means two two pi two pi over omega naught that is two over three m so can we find integers capital n and m uh, so you can see uh, it is three pi uh, n and m for integers you can never realize this so therefore this is not period 
n divided by m is not rational. Okay. Uh, so now uh, I think you understand what this periodicity means. Uh, so in this case, uh, because n and m must be integers, so 2 pi by omega naught must be rational. No periodicity. Okay, now let's look at exponential signals. Uh, so, exponential signal in continuous time is xt equals c e to the power of a t plus t naught. Uh, so, therefore, you can see these uh, e to the power terms. So, you can write them as uh, c e to the power of a t naught times e to the power of a t. Uh, so, in this case, uh, considering a is greater than 0 and t uh, is 0, small t naught is 0. So, therefore, this part becomes 1. So, what we have is xt equals c e to the power of a t. So, when t, t is equal to 0, you put t is equal to 0 there and you get c here, c, and then a signal goes exponentially. But uh, if, uh, so you can see uh, this a is a positive number. When the a becomes a negative number, it is an exponential decay rather than an expo exponential growth. So now uh, you will, we will look at discrete time real exponentials. Uh, so in this case we write this as uh, xn equals uh, c e to the power of beta n. Uh, so write c alpha to the power of n by considering e to the power of beta as alpha for convenience and then you, you can see uh, c and r are real numbers in this case so that's our assumption uh, so take um, alpha equals 0.92 a number greater than 0 a positive number but its modulus is less than 1 because it's 0.92 uh, so because of this uh, situation it, it is an exponential uh, decay uh, so, if alpha is slightly greater than 1, that means alpha is a positive number, but its uh, uh, modulus is greater than 1, and therefore it is an exponential growth. So, what happens if uh, alpha is negative in this case? If alpha is equal to minus 0 0.92, what will happen? So, you can see you are raising that uh, uh, to an integer power, it's 0, it's positive, when it is 1, it becomes negative, and so on. Uh, so at 2, at 10 equals 2, it is positive, at 10 equals 3, it is negative. Uh, so, therefore, uh, you will get a situation like this when alpha is equal to minus 0.92. It is an exponential decay, but uh, every other sample is negative. So, at 0, it is positive, at 1, it is negative, at 2, it is positive, at 3, it is negative, and so on. So, similarly, when alpha is equal to minus 1.08, its modulus is greater than 1, it will be an exponential growth, but uh, since alpha is negative, uh, the uh, sign of the uh, samples uh, switch. It is positive for even numbers of n, it is negative for odd numbers of n. Okay, next we have to look at the complex numbers, but we will uh, do that in the next lecture. But now we will look at how to code these uh, signals. Okay, now let's look at how to plot continuous time sinusoidal signals. So as you remember, continuous time sinusoidal signal is written as xt equals a cos omega naught t plus phi. In this case, we consider a is equal to c1 and omega naught is equal to 1. And let's consider two cases where phi is equal to 0 and phi is equal to pi by 2. Actually, we have we considered in the slides minus pi by 2. Let's consider that. Write it as minus pi by 2. Okay. 
Uh, so to plot that, we have to write percentage sign matplotlib in line to get the plots on this Jupyter notebook itself and import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt for the plots. And I create these plots, figure comma ax, plot subplots, figure size 8 comma 4. Uh, now I need to create the time axis, uh, t uh, equals np arrange. I am doing from minus 3 pi to uh, 3 pi plus this small step that I take in between. Uh, you see, uh, this is a computer and the computers do not know about continuous time signals, so I had to compute the signals value at uh, different times, different uh, sampling at different uh, sampling times. So I choose that interval to be pi divided by 100. Uh, so you can get a better resolution if you like. So a equals 1, omega naught is equal to 1. Uh, see this omega naught and phi is equal to 0, I write xt1 as a np cos omega naught t plus phi and then uh, I plot that, uh, then I can, I actually plot that with uh, t divided by np dot phi, that means uh, I am not plotting, I am plotting uh, this uh, t divided by phi actually, so it's easy for us to see that this is equal to pi, this is 2 pi and so on, and then as a second signal I get in pi by 2 minus pi by 2 uh, this one and then uh, xt2 is the same thing a, a times in b cos omega naught t plus phi and then uh, this is the title of this so you can see i have written uh, some things that you need not understand right now because i have uh, properly written the title of that uh, plot this, that's ju just a string uh, then a uh, little bit of uh, commands to get the axis at the center and so on. So you can see if you uh, run that. Yeah, unfortunately the kernel is not connected. Okay. So when you run that, you will get the two sinusoidal signals displayed. Uh, you can see the blue signal is a cos omega naught t plus phi with phi equals 0. So you can see at time equals 0, the signal's value is 1, uh, that's the uh, cos 0 is 1, you know that. And when you put uh, phi equals minus pi by 2, this is minus 0.5 pi, uh, you can see uh, it's the sign signal. Okay, uh, then we need to plot the discrete time uh, sinusoidal signals. In this case, I chose capital N the period to be equals to equal to 12. Xn equals a cos omega naught n plus phi. I am plotting uh, a equals 1 and plotting for phi equals 0 and phi equals minus pi by 2. It's actually, this is once again, this is minus pi by 2. So in this case, um, the same commands as before, I need an integer, I take that integer from minus 48 to 49, actually you know that it gives me integers from minus 48 to 48 with steps of 1, so minus 48, minus 47 and so on. Uh, so omega naught is 2 pi divided by capital N and phi is 0 for the first signal xn1 a times np cos omega naught n plus phi and there are these little commands that I used to get the proper label and then phase phi equals pi by 2 and signal xn2 is a np cos omega naught n plus phi uh, then uh, some little commands to uh, get this uh, get these labels and so on nicely this location is the one that's not letting me run it. So without the LC, run this. Yes. 
Uh, so you can see uh, the blue dots and the blue signal is for a cos omega naught n plus phi phi equals zero so you can see when it, when uh, n capital small n the independent variable is zero the signal value is one and for the other case uh, when phi is equal to actually that's a mistake i have not properly written that it's a minus pi by two uh, so you can see it's the it's like the sine signal not the cosine signal okay uh, so then we can plot uh, discrete time uh, sinusoids of different frequencies uh, with uh, period capital n equals eight uh, so you can see when, when n is equal to eight uh, only eight distinct frequencies are possible in general in particular omega naught is equal to zero uh, two pi by eight two pi by eight times two that means four pi by eight 6 pi by 8, 8 pi by 8, 10 pi by 8, up until 14 pi by 8. Within this, omega naught equals 8 pi by 8 equals to 5 is the highest frequency. For the case of cos omega naught 10 plus 5, there are identical signals even within these 8 uh, distinct signals. So that's uh, what I am sh uh, showing. So you can see I have taken A equals 1, N equals 8, pi is equal to 0. And I am taking a small n from minus 4n to plus 4n plus 1, that means minus 4 into 4 n. Uh, so for k equals um, 0 to n, I am getting xn equals a n p cos k 2 pi divided by n times n. So you can see a different for different values of k, I am plotting this uh, signal. So first of all, um, this is zero when k is equal to zero uh, then when k is equal to one when k is equal to two when k is equal to three when k is equal to four uh, now you can see that's the highest frequency that means at every other sample is uh, there's a sign change so that's the highest frequency changes so fast the highest frequency at highest frequency changes so this is 10 pi by 8 and this is 6, uh, 12 pi by 8, this is 14 pi by 8, this is uh, 2 pi. So this is the so this signal and this signal are identical. And uh, you can see this signal and this are identical. This and this are identical, this and this are identical. Highest frequency is this frequency. So low frequency increases the frequency up until here and then decreases the frequency. This is not so for the continuous time sinusoids. For continuous time sinusoids, whenever we increase uh, omega naught, the signal's frequency increases. Then plotting uh, the exponential signals, x t equals c e to the power of a t plus t naught. And then uh, I have set t naught is equal to 0, a is equal to 1, and c is equal to 1. And then in this case, a equals equal to 1.2 and then a is equal to minus 1, minus 1.2 uh, so 4 signals xt1, xt2, xt3 and xt4 and then I have plotted those uh, signals so you can see this is e to the power of t and e to the power of 1.2 t has higher rate of increase and e to the power of minus t exponential decay uh, minus 1.2 t has higher decay uh, then discrete time exponential signals xn equals c alpha to the power of n uh, i'm plotting them for alpha equals 0.92 alpha equals 1.08 alpha equals minus 0.92 and alpha equals minus 1.08 so you can uh, see this uh, plot so uh, what i showed in the slides you can see exponential decay with uh, alpha equals 0.92 exponential growth with alpha equals 1.08 because it is greater than modulus is greater than 1 uh, here the modulus is less than 1 but and negative so you can see alternatively sign changes and uh, here minus 1.08 modulus is uh, greater than 1 so they have exponential growth but their sign changes okay so what we looked at uh, was
on a continuous time a sinusoidal signals and then we looked at discrete time sinusoidal signals uh, then we looked at exponential signals in this lesson and next we will look at complex uh, signals uh, 